Good morning, how are you today? Today we are going to be swatching some Isaro and Latia colors. I was sent this very, very generous dot card from Graham, who also has a YouTube channel, which I will link down below in the description, as well as up right here so that you can check out his channel out as well he does watercolor videos as well and he is an awesome very kind and caring person so if you've not checked out his channel please do go and check it out so we have nine colors today to test seven isaro colors and two latia colors and i'm very excited to be trying these because these are two brands that I've noticed on Jackson that they have them, but I haven't got round to buying them yet. Especially the Lutier, because Lutier watercolors are extremely expensive. I think they're about £22 for a 9mm tube, is one of the colors that I saw on there. It's very, very expensive, a little bit out of my reach. So I'm so grateful that he sent me a couple of dots of that, as well as the Isara colors. So let's see how these watercolors swatch. The colours we're swatching today are Yellow Deep, PY154 and PO73. Prussian Blue, PB27. Purple Deep, PV23 Venetian Red, PR101 Steel Blue, PBR7 and PB29 Mauve, PV19 Imperial Moon, that's PR101, and Copper. For the Lutea colors, I have the grey, and I wasn't able to find any pigment information on that yet. And the second one is the Lutea Orange. So that's all the colors painted. The top six plus that one is Isaro and these two are Lutea. Isaro on the whole were I would say medium in terms of rewettability. It's not super easy to rewet like those with honey or even the ones without honey like Daniel Smith and Schmincke. Uh, it's it's a medium ease in rewettability but you can get some nice strong colors such as the purple deep which is really really nice purple and the mauve is very strong as well and you get some more subtler, nicer colours, such as the Prussian blue being a little bit paler than what we are used to seeing in Prussian blue, but it's a really nice blue colour. And then especially the steel blue, which is a mixture of iron oxide with ultramarine blue, and that creates a really nice close to neutral grey. There's a subtle variation in the hue being some bits being a little bit more blue and other bits being a little 
more neutralized. The only color that gave me problem from the SRO was the Imperial Moon. And I had to really scrub at this for a really long time, which is the video you're seeing right now. I had to scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub to get this very faint color. However, this very faint color is gorgeous. It is a kind of a purplish gray or grayish purple with bits of copper actually in them. And I don't know if it's because I painted a swatch in a circle, but I have to admit, it kind of does look like a moon with the subtle grayish warm color and the bits of copper looking like craters. I really, really like it. So if you are into your subtle colors with some interest, then this is a gorgeous color. But do bear in mind that it is probably one of the hardest colors I've ever had to re-wet. So maybe if you do use this color, then it's better to use it straight from the tube rather than letting it dry on the palette. Although I am also totally open to the fact that I could have had a dud tube that was hard to re-wet and that everyone else has had a good experience re-wetting this. I seem to have hit the jackpot in hard to re-wet and solid colors in this series. Now onto the two Lutea's and the reason why I said that the Imperial Moon by Isaro was only one of the hardest colors that I've ever re-wetted is because straight after this and when I painted this it was the hardest color I've ever had to re-wet. This Lutea Grey is now officially the hardest color I've ever had to try to get any color out of. It was really, really hard to rewear. And again, I don't know if I hit the jackpot on difficult dud batches in this series, but this was unusually, very, very unusually hard to rewear. It will be really, really interesting if anyone else has had this experience with little tab. Looking at the swatch from Jackson's though, it's supposed to be a lot darker gray than this, even darker than the steel blue from Isaro kind of gray. So I think this may be either a batch issue or you're supposed to use it straight from the tube rather than letting it dry on the pan. I'm not quite sure. I'm looking forward to finding more about this brand so that I get to know how to use this brand better. If you have experience with Lutea and you have some tips, then please let me know in the comments down below. Thankfully, the Lutea Orange was much, much easier to rewet than the Lutea Grey. It's still not super easy to rewet, but after this, it was a delight to get some color out of the paint. Now, I have to be kind to Lutea because Lutea as a brand, is focused on creating paints from organic materials. They are colors that are extracted from plants and therefore you're not gonna get bright, bright colors like ultramarine blue, which is now artificial and or the quinacridones and the thalo colors. They are definitely unique colors that you don't find in their synthetic cousins. And the Lutea Orange does have this lovely texture and I will put a high-res scan of this swatch page over on my Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash autocarno. So you can have a really good look at the texture of the Lutea Orange and also the copper in the Imperial Moon. But it does have a very unique granulating texture that you don't often see in their synthetic cousins. So what do I think of these two brands? Well, to be fair, two colors is definitely not enough to make a decision on how I feel about a brand. And neither really is seven colors from a brand in terms of deciding how I feel about that brand as well. However, the Isaro one, if I have to draw conclusions, they are medium in rewettability. They do have some very interesting colors like the Steel Blue and the Imperial Moon that is worth having a look at if you are interested in discovering new kind of colors that aren't available in those big name brands. In terms of Lutea, I am going to withhold making any decision on what I feel about this brand because I don't think it's fair to make a decision on just two colors, especially with one having had such a problem with its re-wettability. And I don't have the tubes to really compare between 
how it paints from wet paint and then from dry paint. But I am definitely interested in discovering more about Lutea if I get the opportunity to, because the orange is a lovely, unique color that has very unique textures. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions about either of these brands, do leave it in the comments down below. And when I come to do more studies or if I get to test out more colors, I will try and answer those questions for you. A huge thanks to Graham for sending me this paint and a huge thanks to you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!